I'm a physicist by, by education, and I changed my subject very, very often during my career. Uh, I started to be interested in CGBT issues when uh, Mr. Hoffman, who was the ambas ambassador in Geneva, uh, asked me to help him to negotiate the treaty. And since then, I have been involved in establishing the radionuclide network, in establishing the radionuclide station in my organization, uh, in establishing all the national means in, in Germany after, after Chernobyl. And then in 2000, I switched completely. Now I'm doing things which are health-related, cancer research, uh, medical things, uh, non-ionizing radiation. But I'm still coming back uh, now and then because I think uh, this issue of verification uh, is a key one for global society and for mankind. This was the second conference of this type. I was one of the conveners of the, of the first conference. And at that time, it, it was a risky process because we didn't know where this would go. And even at the end of the conference, which was perceived very positive both by the organization and by the scientists, it wasn't clear if this would be an ongoing process. But with this second conference, uh, this is a, a real follow-up and improvement of what we had before. And I can only encourage this organization to continue to do that. I mean, there have been intermediate activities uh, with the scientific community. Uh, and this is encouraging, because if you decouple from the scientific and technological development, which is outside this organization, and if you don't use this development for the continuous improvement of your system, this will be dead before it enters into force because it will be old-fashioned. Entering inf into force may take years, decades, whatever. And I mean, the scientific understanding of all that has been much different 15 years ago when we drafted the treaty. And the experience in this organization with these technologies and the experience with independent science and technology outside, they are merged here in an excellent way, I must say, uh, which is not trivial. You are some kind of a bureaucratic uh, organization, like many governmental organizations, and it's not trivial to merge this free-thinking scientific and technological society outside with your requirements, wi which are very strict, which are tied to this treaty. But I mean, after so many years, and looking back to, to the results of this conference, which is ongoing, I'm confident that uh, with your management and the leading people in your organization, you are doing the right thing. And this is promising for the future. We have a treaty which defines what the verification system has to do. And from the experience after 15 years, the system isn't complete yet, but we have a lot of experience now. And we have, have improved the capabilities of this system. The system is doing better than we thought it would. So yes, in terms of the definition of the verification system, verification can be done. And I mentioned that the first time when I was in Geneva, the American ambassador asked me the same question. And I said, Mr. Ambassador, I believe this is true. And now, with the experience of 15 years, I believe even more that it's true, which does not mean that we may miss something. But we knew that from the very beginning. And the argument there was, and this was the spirit of the treaty, that the deterrence factor to deter somebody from trying to confine something in the ground would be so high 
that they wouldn't dare to do it. So, I mean, there are all, all those things where you can sneak out, you can build a nuclear weapon without a test. So, I mean, it's not a world which is perfect, but it, it's a world which is perfect in terms of the treaty. There are many examples where normal life, where society can profit from the results and the technological development of, of, the, of the CDBD uh, IMS, uh, including all the software and the methodologies which have been developed in the International Data Center. This global dispersion of the radionuclides from Fukushima, they have really demonstrated that we can do it. I mean, this has never been proven before, and this is a unique opportunity to demonstrate it can be done. And I mean, we had our challenges, and we will have our challenges in the future, both in terms of operation and in terms of technical uh, devices. But we learn our lessons from there. And I think uh, this organization is flexible enough in, in thinking and doing to cope with these challenges and to improve the system to be better in the future. Uh, from a national perspective, this information was of key importance because it told us what we could have estimated or anticipated by models or by knowledge we have, that the contaminated air is now at this point and it's not somewhere else. And it has arrived another point. And the contamination of this cloud was of a certain level. And from there, we could estimate if it was dangerous or if it was not dangerous. And this was of great importance because the public perception of what was going on was so different from what the reality was that it was important to ground proof the situation is the way we th thought it would be, but to demonstrate that, to tell people in America, in Tokyo, or somewhere else in the world, we know exactly what's going on, we know it's not dangerous, they don't have to, to, to care or to be afraid. I mean, this was a unique thing and we should make use of that and propagate that and uh, get this information out uh, now and in the, in the future for the benefit of this organization. This organization has a different mandate and they should stay with their mandate. Don't try to, <laughs> to switch to some, something else because there are others who can do that better. But use events of this kind and demonstrate that, you, that the instruments and the techniques you operate have a huge add-on value for the global uh, information system and for the global demand in the population for information. It is a gold mine. Why is it a gold mine? This is the first time that we have global networks which are standardized in their measurement techniques, which are standardized in terms of the formats they produce information, which means you can use this information if you just follow the standardization. You don't have to convert things from one standard to another. And they are of high quality. They are quality proofed. And this is unique. And this is something which is, has not been available ever and which will not be available any time in the future. And the information gathered there are of so high importance for other areas, emergency response, climate change, understanding the environment, understanding the ocean, uh, understanding uh, natural events like uh, volcanoes and earthquakes and, and all these things. So it, from a taxpayer point of view, uh, it would be 
unbelievable if we would just hide that and say this is for <laughs> nuclear weapon testing and this is not for other purposes as well. Sharing this information with clear responsibilities for the production of the information and for the interpretation of, of inf information by other, by other organizations, this is the, the key way forward. And uh, I hate this uh, argument of cooperation. This is mixing responsibilities. You have to maintain your responsibilities, you have to maintain the high standards of your quality products, and you have to make sure, if you share that with others, that this is acknowledged. I mean, you don't just give it away and others say, this is my information and, and I use it and, and the credit is mine. Your, your part must be very clear, your responsibility must be very clear, but it's no way that this is buried in big computers just for CDBD purposes.